The Jonski is a YouTube channel run by and run for people over the age of 13. People under the age of 13 should click off of this video right now or watch with a parent or guardian. Viewer discretion is advised. You don't scare me! Ah! Multi freaking the name Militiaman. My name is King Prime and welcome back to another video here on the channel. Today we're going to be taking a look at another brand new Star Wars The Vintage Collection figure. That being the Star Wars The Vintage Collection Deluxe Attack of the Clones, Django Fett. It's strange that there have been two Attack of the Clones figures in the last, like, three Vintage Collection reviews. I don't care. I also don't care that they're all Clone Wars era villains. It doesn't matter to me. What matters to me is if this figure is worth the money that uh, they are charging for it. Uh, the answer will not surprise you, even in the least. But before I rant about that for too long, let's take a look at what Django comes in. This is, of course, the standard deluxe packaging for the Vintage Collection line. It's been this way since the 70s and the 80s. Of course, at the top here, we do have that nice blood red Attack of the Clones logo that we are used to with these Attack of the Clones figures. His name is Django Fett. There is no backplate for it because there is no pill. Uh, there is some Kenner-styled advertisements for, you know, the, the flame effect pieces and the, the flame effect pieces and the... Kenner. Uh, there is a photo of the figure on the front in the what appears to be Genosis Coliseum. On the side of the packaging, we do have that same advertisement for the flame pieces that we saw on the front. On the other side, we just have a photo of him uh, about to blast someone's fucking dome off. On the back of the packaging, we do have a nice product placement photo of Django, uh, you know, burning someone uh, to death. Uh, we do have all of the stuff that he comes with, which is not enough. We do have some legal jargon, and on the bottom, who'd have guessed more legal jargon? I say it in every single video, my friends, but you only really care about the packaging for a boxed or carded collector, of which I am not. I'm here to open and review toys, and that is just what I'm going to do. Freeze frame. Banner, I have the high ground. Wow. Say what again? I dare you! I double dare you, motherfucker! Say what one more goddamn time! What? Freeze him on freeze, and here is Django all out of the packaging. As you can tell, he comes with some stuff. Not enough. Uh, before we take a look at Django himself, let's take a look at what he comes with. Of course, his first accessories, the ones I always start with, are his weapons. His, uh, I think these are still Westar pistols. I'm not actually familiar with what the designation of Django's pistols are. The ones that go choom choom. However, I do love them. I don't know if this is a new sculpt or if this is the old sculpt, but they are nice and sturdy, unlike the uh, the regular Mandalorian Death Watch and Super Commando pistols, which are super floppy. These are sturdy, and I very much do like them. I'm not going to do that much because I don't want them to break. Of course, Django can hold them in either of his hands. He has trigger finger hands on either side because there is a little tiny hole for his finger to go so he can uh, choom choom some people up. Like so. So there he goes, dual wielding his pistols. Or if he doesn't feel like choom chooming anybody at the current moment, you can take them out and put them in the holsters. And I love the way these work. It's very interesting. Kind of limits what kind of weapons you can holster with his thigh holsters. However, I do love that they are just circular for the, uh, the single port to house his individual pistols. Like so. Love that they work like that. Um, I, I think that's really clever, and it makes it just it just feels like cowboy stuff. Uh, that's how Django was supposed to be characterized, and I like that it works like that. His next accessory is, of course, his jetpack, which may or may not be the one that gets handed down to Boba. Truthfully, I don't know my Django Fett lore all that well. All I know is that I am furious that this cannot launch the rocket. Um, or that it doesn't have an uh, an alternative rocket uh, launching gimmick like Boba did in the deluxe figure. This is a deluxe figure and it can't do the thing. And that really pisses me off. Of course, you can plug it into Django's back and he can wear it. But as I will talk about later, this thing is a disappointment on all, all levels. His next accessories are, of course, the blast effect parts that can go into the bottom thruster ports of the jetpack. This is pretty much a universal thing with most Mandalorian figures. I know that, uh, you know, of course, Boba had these and now Django has them. 
So I there are at least two sets of them, but on every single jetpack that has been released recently, they all have these ports. Uh, I don't think they work too well. Uh, maybe it's just a QC thing, but of course, you can get the rocket pack doing the blast effect thing, and you can also get Django in a flight pose, even though it's kind of hard. Uh, you can you can get him flying there. You can do the wee he's flying. But I don't really pay that much attention to the jetpack parts, especially since this jetpack is such a disappointment. This thing was worth $30, and it doesn't even have a rocket. Whatever. Django's next accessory is, of course, the flame piece. As you can see, it is currently experiencing some Bill Clinton-itis, uh, leaning to the left there. Shout out if you're not 12 and can understand that joke. Um... <clears throat> You're gonna get to see how long it takes for me to put this damn arm back on. It's still not. It's still not fixed. It's it's thirty dollar figure. Thirty dollar figure, everyone. Thir I'm I'm not I'm not gonna freak out. I'm not gonna freak out. As you can see, there is a rather large box there on the bottom of Django's arm. Uh, I think this is supposed to be the flamethrower piece proper. This is where the flame is supposed to come out of. Uh, like that. However, of course, this, you know, it's not possible. There's a little hole in there, tiny little hole. It can register the flame effect part. Jam that in very carefully. Don't break it off because, like, you know, it is soft plastic. As you can see, it bent so badly. And you can have Django spewing flame on someone. I'll give it credit. This does look pretty cool. However, just look at that, guys. 30 bucks. 30 bucks. This is, this is what we get. And I almost killed myself over the arm because of it. So, uh, yeah. Cool that can be done. There's a, a point I'll talk about later that I'll, I'll make and, and complain about in a little bit. And his fucking arm came off again! <laughs> Final accessory is, of course, his helmet. Which is the perfect size and color. It's nice and silver. It's super nice. It's got you know, the really dark blue. It's got the really nice blue T-visor and surrounding printing that makes it look so nice. It has a rangefinder that can go down. It articulates up and down. It's perfect, and it's a swappable helmet. Now, look at this. Look at the size difference here. Tell me that you would not be able to put this helmet on there if it was soft or plastic. I don't hate that it is a removable helmet, because then I get to make the decapitation joke. I do hate that Hasbro can't make up their fucking minds about if they want it to be removable or swappable. In the last review, pre Vizsla, we had a wonderful swappable helmet that was nice and proportionate and really well detailed. Now we have a swappable one, like so, and you... Yeah, uh, makes me so mad. And to make it worse, if we do the thing with, with Boba... Boba, yep. To do the thing with Django... Take off the head, yep. Put the helmet on. It, uh, and actually, you know, it's proving me a liar here. It stays on pretty well now uh, until you see that. You see, you see that? You see, see the see the bit kind of kind of coming off here? Kind of coming off? You know, yeah, mm-hmm. Now, someone, of course, will inevitably say, oh, but King Prime, you can just glue it, right? Yeah, I can glue it. I shouldn't fucking have to because this is a $30 figure! Anyway, the helmet does look pretty good when it's on Django. As you can see, the, the silver of the helmet and the silver of the armor match perfectly. It looks very good. But moving on from his accessories, let me put his head sculpt back on. Django looks pretty... Mm. Django looks pretty okay. Uh, moving in close on his face here, we do have a pretty nice likeness of Tamar Morrison. They, they do pretty well uh, with the likeness department. However, he does look just a little bit too, like, caramel instead of, like, burnt umber for, for skin. Uh, I know that, that Tamar Morrison in some shots of Attack of the Clones looks a little bit darker in complexion than this does. It's not bad. It's, you know, it's there's still a bit of pigment there, so it, it works. Just not as well as I think I'd like it to. Uh, I don't have that many problems with it. However, moving in real close, you can see that there is the nice scarring and stuff that Django does canonically have. Nice details, and of course his eyes look good. I think that this head sculpt kind of missed but it, it's close enough to where I'm not mad about it. And of course, because of this face printing technology, 
it looks good. So that's that's good at least. Uh, what is not good at least is that he looks like he has no neck, uh, and he really doesn't. He has barely any head articulation, um, which really makes me upset. And you, you can really see the gap there forming between the uh, the the shoulder armor and his chest. It's really bad when I move this around. Uh, not so bad as you saw when I did the swap when I have the helmet on there, but without the helmet, it looks really bad. He does, of course, have his nice silver armor, and it looks, it's like near chrome. It's That's how shiny it is. It looks super good. Uh, there is, of course, that same back chest piece that has the buckles that a lot of these Mandalorian figures have. Uh, of course, he does have the hoses going to his gauntlets, his his grappling hook, which we see him use to wrap around Obi-Wan Kenobi's leg in the film. But his his left arm, the flamethrower, um, yeah, very detailed. It's painted bronze and black and silver. Great looking. Um, doesn't fucking stay on. Uh, y this, this joint is fucked. I mean, I can't... Uh, I'm pushing it on. Hopefully for the rest of the view it'll stay now. But other than, y you can already see it's separating. It's... Uh, it's infuriating. $30 figure. The hoses are black. They're very flexible. They're not going to snap, I don't think. I hope at least. Um, but that really chafes my ass. No uh, wrist plating on his, his, his hands, which I'm not actually sure if that's accurate or not. Going down, of course, he does have that sort of like diaper style, Boba Fett um, styled chest rig, waist rig, Mark V combat evolved spartan mjolnir uh dump diaper piece that has the cowboy bdsm straps to his holsters it looks really plasticky i think that it, it really contrasts with the the teal like cobalt ish of suit to the silver of his his armor to the bra like the gray of his flak vest just to have like a really plasticky looking belt and holster combination the detailing and sculpting on it is really nice. As you can tell, there's lots of edges there. The buckles are painted and stuff like that, but it, it just doesn't doesn't look great, uh, even though I do like the holsters, truthfully. Um, he does have the accurate knee armor and the accurate shin armor, as well as the, uh, the, the feet, although I'm pretty sure these are exactly the same except for the knees. Except for the knees. Yeah, as I thought. The, the shoes are the exact same as pre Vizsla, and they're thus the rest of the Death Watch and Super Commando Mandalorians, which is upsetting, but I think it works here. Uh, I don't think that there's much of a difference between those armors, so hopefully this works. What doesn't work, however, is the articulation of this figure. Um, you can already tell that there's a big issue with it, which I'll get to in a second, already stated that his head is very tight. There is very little articulation. An articulation that is not even supposed to be there. This isn't supposed to pop up. Oh my god. I know I'm freaking out. I'm having nerd rage right now. I just... $30, guys. 30 bucks. The head can't really move that much. You can't really get an instance ins unless you're the insing and it's not supposed to be there. It's unfortunate. Other than that, you know, normal uh, ball-jointed stuff. You can get a full range of articulation at the shoulders, thanks to the, and I'll give it the credit to this, fantastic soft goods armor for the uh, the shoulder pieces. However, Pre Vizsla and other Mandalorians have done this better. I don't know why it's coming peeling off of Django. It just is, and that's making me hate this figure even more. You can get about a 90 degree elbow bend with the hoses that are attached to his tricep there. There's added articulation at his forearm. However, I've even bent the peg. Or maybe the peg is just bent and that's why it's not staying. I don't know. It doesn't really matter to me. All I know is that it's a piece of shit. And it really makes me mad. I think it's sculpted like this. So I'm just going to leave this off. As you can see, his other arm doesn't swivel. It's just a thing for this arm, apparently. This arm doesn't get the swivel there which is unfortunate. He has an up and down joint on his right hand. On his left, he has the same exact up and down joint, which is good for a Mandalorian who can fly, uh, but it's pretty much useless for this because, um, yeah, yeah. His diaphragm joint is so loose for some reason. I don't know why. He can get his reps in, but uh, he might as well just do them for forever because no matter how you're going to pose this guy, he's either going to wobble or lean. It makes me mad. Nothing of the waist proper, and even then you couldn't really get anything because 
these holsters are like the most restrictive thing about this figure. Uh, you can only really get that far with his leg because of how tight these rubber pieces are that attach to his waist. It's really annoying and really limits the articulation. Uh, he does have, as you can see in my manual here, ball jointed hips, which is good. I like to see that. However, it's pretty much useless because of these holsters. He does have a thigh swivel as well, but like I said, pretty much useless because of how his legs are bound to each other. His knees have pretty much a 90 degree bend there, as well as his feet, which can go down that far, up that far, and get a pretty great uh, ankle pivot. That's about it for the articulation, however. Let's bring in some other figures to show you how Django stacks up. Freeze front. Just waking up in the morning, gotta thank God. Freeze from Unfreeze. Here is Django next to our previous Star Wars The Vintage Collection review. Pre Vizsla. Here he is next to his Attack of the Clones buddy and business associate. Count Dooku. Here he is next to the golden standard of action figures himself. Dark Times Darth Vader. And I'll bring everyone out here so that they can get in close to Vader. Even pre. Here he is next to a Vitruvian Hax skeleton, who I will set up right here. And here he is next to a Mandalorian of my own design. As you can see, Django is actually just a bit taller than uh, Pre Vizsla. If you are, and I will disconnect the camera from the tripod here. If you get a head-on view, he does have him by just a little bit. Uh, he's about the same height as the skeleton. And just a little bit shorter than Count Dooku and the Mandalorian of my own design. However, Darth Vader does, of course, tower over him. Even though he is on a stand, he would tower over just about anyone. However, that's it for the comparisons. Let's move on to my final thoughts. So I can tell you exactly what I think about Django. Freeze frame. I got, I got, I got, I got loyalty, got loyalty inside my DNA. Cocaine quarter piece, got war and peace inside my DNA. I got power, poison, pain, and joy inside my DNA. I got hustle. Freeze, stream, unfreeze. So, you're not going to be surprised to hear that this figure does not deserve the uh, the, the title of, of Deluxe. Um, for reference, the old Star Wars The Vintage Collection Django Fett had all of the accessories that he comes with now and more included in the old packaging. And this one costs twice as much and comes with half. That's not fair to the consumer. That's not fair to anybody who likes Django. That's not fair to the character. And it makes Hasbro look a fool. More than that, this figure is rife with QC issues and bad decisions that make me absolutely hate it. You can barely get any articulation out of the legs. The arm keeps falling off. For whatever reason, they made the head fucking suck. And now we have this bullshit. No further. For whatever reason, they couldn't just take the head that they already used on this... Despite its problems, near-perfect Boba Fett figure. Uh, it doesn't have an articulatable rangefinder, however, it is perfectly proportioned and removable, and it has a better Timor Morrison head sculpt. It is the exact same size, and for whatever reason, they decided to go with the swappable helmet option. I don't know why. It just makes it makes me mad. And now we have the, the funny, decapitated Django Fett joke. There are some good things to say about this figure, of course. That's not to say that it's bad. I just don't like it. The painting is fantastic. Uh, you know, this 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 little bit here with the flamethrower is super nice looking. His armor is shiny as shit. And I did check. The shins and the feet are accurate. Same with the knees. It looks really good and is an accurate figure to how Django appeared in the movie. It's just not enough. It's already counteracting the things it replaced in a worse way, making Hasbro look bad and making me look like an angry, ranging nerd, which I am, but shut up. This figure really pisses me off. I wish it didn't, but it does. If I still had the option to return it, I would. But unfortunately, I'm a vintage collection reviewer. I'm here to review toys. That's just what I'm going to do. This figure is going to stay in my collection, and it's going to serve as a reminder of the angriest I got in a review. But if what I've said and the bits I've pulled and the stupid way I've made myself look hasn't changed your opinion on this figure, 
If you're a fan of Jango, you're a fan of Attack of the Clones, you're a fan of the Clone Wars, you're a fan of Star Wars in general, make sure you share this video with your friends, share these Facebook groups, all that good stuff. If you like the content, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe down below. It keeps helping the channel grow, it keeps helping me pump out this content. That's going to be pretty much it for this time, my friends. Thank you all so very much for watching, and as always, peace.